um, budget agenda uh, budget meeting held at April 12, 2022. I showed the time at 506. I'm sure we have a full quorum here. And um, first off, we need to. Uh, um, no one's participating remotely, so I'll need first off an adoption of this agenda. What'd you say? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it begins. <laughs> did, I, right. did I say it right? <laughs> so, so all Sorry. those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Aye from the kitchen. Okay. Which matches. Um, next up, who's, we have discussion of fiscal year 2022-2023. Budget. Right? Is that you? Yes. Okay. I was gonna go to her, but I wasn't sure which one. So, so uh, Christina. Um, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I always think one of those. <laughs> so this is actually gonna be really easy. We, um, we've actually got the, the budget balance last time. We Good job, ladies. Presented yeah. it to you. I think it was uh, negative. 60-ish, I believe. No, I thought it was 70, but some, it was somewhere around good there. Good job. Good job, good job. So we did get, um, look at this cover sheet, look down the proposed 22-23 column, you'll see the zero at the bottom. That means the budget, the budget is balanced. So it's do match up with all the revenues that we have taken um, Again, this front sheet is just a synopsis of all the detail sheets that we're going to go through. So we're going to flip the page over to the revenue detail. <clears throat> we did get the valuation letters back from the county. So we did slightly increase if you look at the estimated actual to the proposed 22-23 numbers. Um, slight variations there. So we did ha actually have an increase in revenues. Um, additionally, going down to unrestricted we had a increase in revenues based off of North Carolina League of Municipality projected increases percentage wise. So we basically took <clears throat> what we estimate from the end of the fiscal year that we're currently in, plus the North Carolina League projections that they have estimated across the, the state. When we get those, we what the projections or we got them? We got them. Oh, so that's yeah. Okay. Jamie, do you remember what? Beer and wine was 1.75. I think so. And then we actually didn't even touch utility, the utility sales tax. We kept that across the board the same. That actually probably will increase, but we didn't, that's one of those variables we didn't know for sure. And then the local sales and use tax, do you remember what that increase was? No, I can just grab the booklet though. <clears throat> so as she's going to get, go get that, uh, we'll keep going down the list. Pal bill, you'll see it. Actually, a negative. We had 197,000 this year. We're going back to 147. The reason being is that they had some type of additional appropriation in the legislator's office this year that was just one time. I think it was COVID related, so we did get more money this year. Um, we're obviously not going to spend all of that, so it will go back into fund balance reserve. Thank you. The estimated projected increase for local sales and use tax was. 3.75%. This year that we're in now, they had projected a roughly 10% increase from the previous year. Any questions on any of that? So what we'll do based off of these projections is we will monitor expenditures as they come in. We'll look at revenues as they're coming in, making sure they're matching up with the projections. And if not, we will you know, not do larger projects to take it, take into into account um, lesser revenues received. I mean, the projections are pretty are pretty on point. Have been in the past, correct? They have, yes. When do you get those numbers like throughout the year? It depends on what it is. So the beer and wine, it look, beer and wine, what looks like we get in May of every year. Okay. Sales and use or sales tax, we get that every month. And then the utility sales, we get it quarterly. Okay. Moving on to zoning permits uh, and development fees. 
This is, uh, we're still working on these numbers. If you look at the estimated actual, it has 1,700 listed here. We think there's a, an error in where we're coding some things. Um, development fees are basically when we, so AMT, you'll notice in the expenditure section of planning and zoning, when we get to that, you'll have a pretty high increase of, not increase, but you'll have a pretty substantial number for engineer costs. I think it's around the tune of $80,000. Basically what we do is we pay our engineering bills out of planning and then we get reimbursed for those development fees from whatever the developer is. So it's kind of an offset. Um, there obviously are larger needs that are not applicable to one particular development and that's why we have an increased uh, difference in the revenue minus the expenditure and that line item in planning and zoning which we'll get to. You look at sales and service, we basically increased a couple of things based off of us getting out of COVID. People are using the park more often. We've got the picnic shelter there that people are utilizing. Uh, professional passes, we're still seeing you know a lot of those coming in. Garden plots, and then we also increased uh, substantially from the prior year in contributions and sponsors because we anticipate Marvin Day <coughs> being kind of similar to what we're seeing now. We're also um, putting in a $1,500 revenue for Village Hall rentals, you know, we, we don't know what that's going to be. We just kind of put that in there just to play with the number. It could be more, it could be less. Investment earnings, we've pretty much kept that the same since I've been here, if I can remember correctly. Uh, we haven't touched that in years. And then you have your miscellaneous revenues, which really consists of that fee and loan money that was from Barcroft, I believe. Which or one? Or Belgrave. Um, the 8600 for fee and loan. <coughs> and then we have <coughs> solid waste fees coming in at 468000 That's we'll, And we'll have to go over this later at the June, I'm sorry, at the May meeting because we do have to adopt the fees for next year. Um, I'm not projecting any changes in the fees that I had initially told you guys back when we started this program, which was $244 a year. I don't think it's going to be any more than that. However, I will say that because of fuel being so high right now, we are seeing a, a fuel surcharge. And that actually applies to the bills that we're getting now. Um, per the contract, it was a, a six-month look back from the date of when we um, <coughs> awarded the contract to them. So as of day one, we did start seeing a fuel surcharge. Now it's not a huge amount of money. I think we'll be able to absorb it, but as we go on um, and the bills keep coming in, I'll have to just update you before the year closes out. So we shall see. I did budget internally in our projections for the, the rates for a fuel surcharge. However, I have not um, re looked at it to see if it matches up with what we're seeing now. It, and it still could change. It's one of those variables. Can I go back to the slime? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are we not doing any money for Marsh? Or are we pulling it from someplace else? Or are they not asking for anything? So this this is just revenues. So unless we project any revenues oh, for Marsh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what is the donation? Like any donations to them? Uh, like, if, like if you want to donate $100 and gotcha. we know. So we, we have never really planned a... I got it. I got it. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. I was not reading um, that correctly. No debt proceeds this year, so that's not listed there. And then we have no projected fund balance preparation. Any questions on revenues at all? Okay. <coughs> Moving on to page 30, which is general government. You've got your salaries listed there. Um, we're having no temporary intern. This is converting the finance officer from part-time to full-time. Aside from that, in general government, there's no changes in, in hours committed. Um, you do have a rough, roughly 10% increase in bonus slash merit. 7% COLA, 3% merit. You do have, um, let's see. Where did we get the 7% COLA from? I looked at the CPI and that, well, I did that when we first started the budget process and it was around six 
it was hovering around there. I have not looked at that since then, so that's something I need to go back and look at. But I'm, not, I'm not questioning it. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out where, no, where we got it from. And when we come back for you to approve this, I'll have that CPI print out so y'all can see it. And the, the CPI is, is just for those listening at home, it's Consumer Price Index, and it basically looks at the cost of things that have increased over the course of however many months that we look at, and um, it gives an average. Um, let's see. Huh? 7% might be low. Huh? So <clears throat> then, whatever it keeps going up. Well, what did it come out today? 8.4? Yeah, it was 8.5. Wow. I think today, actually, I think the CPI, a new one came out today. I'm not mistaken. Eight and a half percent, I yeah. believe. It was 8.5. Okay. Um, well, that's good. I like that. I love spending more money than I <laughs> need to. Yeah, the, I think they come out every two months, if I'm not mistaken, or every three months. So the, the latest one I looked at was around six. Um, this got y'all stipends in there. There's been no changes in those stipends. stipends. Um, same for PRG and planning. Health and dental insurance actually had an 8% increase. <coughs> Relatively low because last year I think we had a decrease, if I'm not mistaken. And then short term disability, life, all that remained the same. Retirement has gone up this year. The Ligers actually went up, I think, about 1%. That's a required match that they require local governments to put in for each employee. <clears throat> Let's see. FICA, all that's calculated. All that, the rest of the stuff is pretty much generic, automatically calculated based off of workers' comp, unemployment. Any questions on any of that? up to professional services. Okay. Moving on to general government professional services, you have your attorney in there, the retainer, and hourly. He has not gone up this year, so um, we're thankful for that stability. The accounting services, if you recall about a year ago, we hired a accounting CPA firm to help us through our first audit process without our tenured finance officer, Chris Robertson, who left about two years ago. Um, they helped us a lot in our preparation for internal statements, internal finance statements. That's really all we're going to use them for this year. Um, we feel comfortable with the process and we're, we've toned that down to the tone of $12,000. Last year's request was $20,000. Um, we've used them quite substantially this year, but we feel like we're not going to need them as much next year. The auditor contract slightly increased based off of um, our new agreement with them to the tune of $250. I will say there may be a slight chance there's an increase in this that may happen when the audit process takes place. Reasoning being is the acceptance of the COVID fund. When we expend a certain amount of grant dollars within a year, there's a different type of audit that's required. And if they have to do that, which we don't think that they're going to have to do in this year, but if they do have to do it, we will have to change this amount slightly. What's the cutoff number for that? I think it was like, it was something pretty high. Over $5,000. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Well, the reason why I'm asking is because, you know, um, we've got that other grant that we're having to match. So if we oh, yeah, try to keep, yeah. that's, you know, true. that's a good point. Keeping it as, you know, if we know where the max is, we don't spend more than that in one year, then we don't have to take the extra expense of the extra audit. Kind of thing if we do it in stages yeah that's we can look in i think you're right jamie i think it was five hundred thousand, but we'll look into that and we'll try to stay under it um let's see where am i at professional it's, services um five hundred thousand dollars for um a single audit is seven hundred fifty thousand in federal grant expenditures for we should reach in one year in one year yeah, yeah. so well, and it wasn't much it was like a two thousand dollar increase yeah it wasn't a lot okay um let's see codification of ordinances that's just requirement computer computer consultant we we bumped him up slightly just because we i'm sorry no we didn't 
We estimate the actual load. I must have bumped them up last year. Um, 25000 for professional services. So in here we have $15,000 for a communications consultant. And I also put another 10000 in for a salary study if we decide to do that or some other type of professional service. We don't, we don't have to necessarily earmark it for a particular use right now. We'll have to come back for an appropriation for, or not appropriation, but for a uh, approval on any type of contract anyway. So. Did we already do a salary study? We did not. We did a um, <coughs> classification study. Yeah, classification. They so didn't have salaries? <coughs> they, get, they gave suggested salaries, but they basically earmarked us with like municipalities. They didn't like delve into the exact detail of what we do. They, that study was basically looking at if we're adequately staffed. They did do salaries, but it, it wasn't a, a detailed synopsis of it. And we don't, have to, we don't have to necessarily do one. We can come back to that. Union County contract for collecting our taxes is estimated around $13,000. And then aside from that, all your <coughs> membership dues for professional organizations that we're part of. Any questions on any of that? All right, moving on to page three of general government. <clears throat> Training, travel, books, all that remains the same. We still have the earmark in there for tuition assistance. Um, in case, that's one of the benefits that we offer to employees and no one's taken advantage of it yet. But we have that earmark in there in case they do. Um, let's see, we have the cancel board retreat at $5,000. I know there's been some discussions about doing off-premise retreats. And if that's something that y'all want to, to seriously entertain, we may look at increasing that number. Yeah. Um, Where are you going? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we just briefly talked about Old North State. I mean, they got, a, they got nice cottages up there. It's a way... I mean that that. It's what they used to do years ago. Yeah. So I go to Firethorn every day. That's not a retreat for me. That's a I I have to see people I don't want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I agree. Okay, and, 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 and as soon and as soon as we leave there, staff comes right back here to a place they they come every single day. It's, let's not call it a retreat. Let's just call it a. Extended work day, off-site work day. Well, yeah, and maybe if we invite field the, trip uh, county commissioners, we'll bring that, the entire. Staff. As far as I'm concerned, that won't that won't happen again. <laughs> we got we got the bad end of that. Yeah, but I just think it's something. I mean, when companies when they do retreats, they go they they. It's a treat. They it's something they retreat. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's something that they, they get, get to. And listen, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying Old North State because we yeah. talked about it. But And it doesn't have to be that, but it should be something that we can go and decompress and talk about stuff as opposed to just, just my two cents. Well, I will say Old North State, they actually do um, discounted rates if you do it during the winter season because it doesn't get utilized a lot during that time period. So if we want to do an off-premise retreat, Old North State is actually pretty good. It accommodates you in a terms of like you can have a meeting space and then you have uh, accommodations to sleep at night. That's in New London, right? So it'd be we'd yeah, be going okay. into a two day, like an overnight, yeah, a weekend. Yes. Yeah. That's okay. Now, where, can you pronounce that slowly? What is it called? Old North State. Old North. Old. Old. Old, old <laughs> like Joe. <laughs> Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> that's the. That's North Carolina's nickname. It, it, it's gated. Yeah. I'm gonna ground it's, you. It's gated. <laughs> it's Sorry, Dad. Absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Where, where is this located? Middle of the state. It's an hour and a half from here. Stanley uh, County. What did you say? I thought Stanley it's in Montgomery County. No, it's in Montgomery County. Montgomery County. Almost right outside of Stanley County. But it's. Uh, it's off of Baden Lake. It's, it's nice. That's nice. Let's get close to it's my neck of the woods. I know what Baden Lake is. It's right by Baden. Okay. Just north of Baden. Absolutely gorgeous. Facilities. Is that something you want me to entertain? Are we going to play golf? I don't know if you want to no, play golf. Can we? But, but let me, can we? But <laughs> here's the only thing bad about going to Old North State. Oh, there's, there's, there's no cell service. Yeah, there's not. Yeah. 
pretty oh, good. Well, that's good. That's, that's actually good. <laughs> that's why they've treated. got inter- I mean, you got yeah, internet. Yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah, they're they're self so 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 yeah, yeah. Um, I have a flash. Oh, we'll look into that and we'll get some quotes and we'll readjust the numbers. Okay. Um, let's see, liability. But that's what they used to do years right before me. I I never went off site, but before I came in. I'm not saying that, but I mean. That makes sense. So the um, liability and property insurance, I did increase that about $5,000. I honestly don't know what it's going to be based off of insuring the new village hall. So this number may have to change. Um, we won't know until we can actually get them to come out and walk through. Your 9000 was, was the liability? No, it wasn't any property, was it? The park. Oh, the park. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about that. that you, can we stop? You can find out and you can get a quote to whoever you injure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, I mean, we're like this close to being up. They're, they're coming to do a walkthrough. And so once they do that, they'll they'll let us know how much it's going to be. I think we've already got it scheduled. Um, I would think it would go up more than that because you had a million dollars plus to the okay. policy. Well, we may have to adjust this number. And as you're getting ready to see, I've got some, some free money in here that we can pull from. Free money? <laughs> That's the best kind of money. Good. So moving on to manager discretion fund. Hey, you're down there. Nothing free. Oh, Dad says nothing free. <laughs> I've got man- manager discretionary funds in here at twenty-two thousand, and that's basically the free money. If we need to pull from somewhere, we'll pull that. That's Christina's free money. <laughs> For me, doing Santa Claus in perpetuity. Um. And just to note, for those listening at home, I can't spend this money on anything I want to. I have to come back to you all for appropriation approval on that. It's just earmarked there. Um, Bank copiers, (laughs) mails, mileage, all that stuff is pretty much the same. It's pretty standard across the board. (coughs) Any questions on any of that? Mm -hmm. Software supplies and phone, uh, smart fusion, that's our tax database as well as my gov hub this is something that we had to do when we actually collected taxes and we're still in that interim process where we have to maintain a tax number for i think it's i think it's a period of 10 years and we're still in the process of transitioning over to work to a database that we could maintain for delinquent taxes so this number will eventually go away it's just we have to keep it here now for state compliance Uh, agenda formatting that is actually the e-scribe the platforms that you have on your ipads were if you recall we're pulling that from arpa funding so you're not seeing that in the budget the archive social is something that austin brought forth a few months back that was archive social was back in 2020. okay yeah it basically archives a lot of the social media posts that we have very handy for large public records requests. So this agenda formatting, you will see increase in subsequent years, just not anytime soon because we're going to pull it from ARPA. Um, other software, QuickBooks is in here. We are transitioning over to the new Tyler Technologies, which is the new financial software we purchased with ARPA funding. Um, this will be an annual cost of around thirty thousand dollars so just so you're aware in subsequent years you're not seeing it here but you will see it once the arpa funding is um is done which should be in about three years cell phone internet cell phones all that's estimated around twenty thousand dollars we've got our website cost in here and basically everything else associated with technology any questions on any of that? Our new fans are fancy. They are. They look at all. They were the only people there working all day today. Awesome. And then we had have, have debt service for Village Hall at one hundred and five thousand. This should, if I'm not mistaken, I think it starts going down next year. Yes. Um, facility maintenance. That's for anything that goes wrong or that we see pop up that we want to, to fix or add to Village Hall. We had to put a number in here, so we just started with 5,000. For the ceiling, for the ceilings and some of the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> when, is, when is our last payment due for the, ha- the house here? You're going to see a budget amendment tonight for um, the next month. 
Hopefully just April. <clears throat> I mean, yeah. Yeah. For what? For here. For here. here. Yeah. I mean, cause we've used all of that out of that account. So we're moving over some extra for rent and any um, repairs. So we're not paying rent for May? We should be done in April. Hopefully. <laughs> April, I think, was paid on what, the first. What was, I think what, was per, what was what did our contract say? Did we have to give a three month notice, six mm -hmm. month notice? We're on month to month. Right month, now. month to month. Mm -hmm. So we just moved over enough for one to four months right now. Okay. Right. Mm. All right. Um, I'm looking for a rush. I'm going to move in here. That was time to sell your house. <laughs> 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 you said you were going to downsize, dude. You know a guy that gets the rent. Good deal. Yeah, you got some good neighbors across the street. You'd be right in the heart of it. Yeah. <laughs> sit out there with a chair and a cigar. <laughs> My boxers. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Marvin. <laughs> wow. Well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I need to unsee that. <laughs> Capital outlay, we have just a, a few computers we've got in here. Um, $4,500 and then just $1,000 for miscellaneous furniture. Is that going to be enough with like extra filing cabinets and stuff that you guys need? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure $1,000 is going to be enough, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to buy that in this year with some of our okay. village hall. All right, just check them. Any questions on general government? I like that though, just in case. All right, moving on to planning and zoning. Okay, so we do, okay, moving to planning and zoning, you do see an increase in the salaries listed here. Um, one of the reasons being for that is that we did take out the code enforcement contract, which was $11,000. So I did adjust the salaries here and because Hunter will actually be absorbing those duties and um, there's an increase in his salary due to that increase in duties. No zoning assistance being requested. Same bonus and merit that you see in other organizations, the other um, departmental cost. Same health insurance, life insurance, and all that stuff. Every, everything else remains the same that we've already discussed in general. <coughs> Professional services, you'll see the engineering costs that I'd mentioned when we were talking about revenues. You see the 77000 That, again, goes back to some of this will come back in from developers. Um, not all of it, but some of it will. But that's where our AMT bills come out of. Engineering other. Um, the note in this section. Uh, Cantil actually adopted a resolution back in 2020 that was a stormwater study program. I was for mm -hmm. a build grant, so this is a, a match for that build grant if it comes to fruition. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Planning and zoning consultant, you'll see a, a massive decrease here. Uh, Hunter's been doing really well and able to absorb his, his task, and he's kind of come to the end of the need for the MHD district with the consultant, so he's gonna back off. Tom? Yeah, Tom. You no, know, we have a lot of hours banked up right now. He's going to back off of that contract. Okay. Urban Forester, that's just the contract we have with the county. And then the code enforcement, you see the 11000 that was budgeted last year, it's gone this year. Does, uh, <clears throat> does that Urban Forester, that, does he have a limit that we can use him for that month? I don't think so. I think it's just basically like a mutual aid, like a... Yeah. Good, I'm gonna get all money worth then. <laughs> I'm sure like his organization probably tells him to like manage his time wisely on that, but yeah, yeah. I mean it's okay. And then the operating expenses are pretty much the same as last year in addition to the membership fees. Any questions on any of that? Nope. Moving on to public safety. We did receive we did receive a letter back from the county, and this is what they estimate the contract being is two hundred and twenty three thousand um, dollars. 
obviously an increase from last year, which is to be expected. This is still not the final number. They give us a estimate at the beginning of April. They say this is what we think it's going to be. However, upon a budget adoption, it may change slightly. That actually happened this year. If you recall, we did a budget amendment sh shortly after the budget was adopted for a $1,500 increase in what was actually the differential. Don't they know like, when budget season ends to get this stuff in? <laughs> we did not put the off-duty control uh, traffic control in here. We had initially said we were going to pull it from ARPA, so we could still do that later. Um, if y'all decide to pull it all together, it, it doesn't matter in this in this annual budget because it's either it's going to come out of ARPA regardless, so it's not budgeted here in the annual operating budget, regardless of what you decide at a later date on funding it or not. We have we have the money to do it. In ARPA, yeah. What did we budget for? Um, it's around forty, fifty thousand dollars annually. God, I thought that was higher than that, but I'm I'm gonna go with what you tell me. It it's supposed to be higher than that because they they had given us a minimum. I think it was three hours. When we when we <coughs> renegotiated the the hours and the two officers and all that stuff, it was supposed to be around eighty thousand dollars because they had a three hour minimum, but we ended up negotiating with them two hours upon us enacting the contract with them or the change okay. so they honestly could come back and say no you got to go with a three hour minimum and it's going to increase it but okay the fees was, have just gone up a little bit because of how we pay them and we have to use their roll call system which has added two dollars and i think 50 cents per shift per hour um that we have to add on so now we pay through their system instead of cutting a check for each deputy so it's like ten dollars okay. per gotcha. shift then if it's 250 per person yeah, per hour per shift it's something okay. like that we had that on the which that adds up Pro yeah. it's still probably worth it from it is nice all those checks it does it's, it's really sign. cut down on a lot of time yep. you can just ach them their money i review their time sheets you can make sure every shift is booked right on their website it's really nice um the operating expenses you'll this is hopefully the last year you'll see the light tower rental this is for those off duty people can't we pull that for isn't that part we of can yeah we can I mean, but it's like six one way half a dozen the other it's coming from i mean well but it's not coming out of the out of this fund though it would be coming from arpa just like the officers if we have to actually cover it but you know maybe somebody will pony up a little bit of money but I'm not hopeful. And then the miscellaneous tools that I've mentioned to you all that Mason and Tommy want to get for helping people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Change the tires. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? All right, moving into transportation. Um, I'd rather have buy a pay truck with that six thousand dollars for Tommy and Mason than to spend it. It's five hundred dollars. I'm it's saying the six thousand dollars for the light tower. I'd rather have yeah. something constructed. Well, we're not going to do it much longer anyway, right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Talk to the state. Pray that there's no hurricane. All right. Oh, <laughs> shut your mouth. Just put it out there. Um, <laughs> moving into transportation, um, we have nothing in sidewalk construction. We may want to actually consider putting some in there. Um, well, no, no, no. I take that back. Let me get down. Street lights at roundabout. That's what we've had budgeted for some years now, and that should be the correct number. For current or this one down here, okay. not that one. For current, yes, <laughs> to power the lights. Twenty thousand in engineering costs associated with power bill. That <coughs> primarily them helping us prepare reports, ad addressing any issues um, that come up when we have miscellaneous repairs. So a little on the high end, but I'd rather it be high than too low. Um, road repair and maintenance. This is any little potholes that we need to fill throughout the time. There's nothing scheduled, so I've just got five thousand in here. Okay. Is the uh, and Marvin Creek when you first go into it the circle there? It's not our roundabout. It's not our. It's not okay. Good. Let's go ahead and need to repair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went all through that last year and figured out it belongs to the state. Maybe they, yeah. they, maybe they want to claim it. Marvin Creek. Oh, the roundabout. Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's see, stormwater, gutter repair, maintenance. So if you remember, last year we actually did 
of the curb and gutter issues that were discovered. So we probably shouldn't see much of this um, in subsequent years. Road work surfacing, I have in here at $110,000. This is one of those areas where, this is one of the funds that, or departments I should say, that the money has to be budgeted and then if it's not used, it reverts back to a reserve. So this is kind of where I put all that money. You'll see on the comment section, I've got 15,000 in miscellaneous repairs, 15,000 in the Greenway fog seal, and then whatever we don't spend out of there, which is estimated around 80,000, it's just going to revert back to fund balance reserve. Now, if miscellaneous repairs come in at 20, then that number goes down. Okay, and that's miscellaneous reserve for, or fund balance reserve for power yeah, bill. Okay. <coughs> that we'll use at some point. And then we've got the street sweeper in there at $2,000. Are they doing it? Because it looks like poo. That's, yeah, they should be about due. I mean, it looks terrible out there. Yeah, I, I saw a piece of siding out there yet today. I didn't have time to stop and pick it up. Um, <coughs> and then we have the CRTPO dues. Any questions on any of that? Always, always not not working. Joe, not out there cleaning up. If you need me, I'll get out there. I got time. Wear a vest. <laughs> Safety first. <coughs> Moving on to Parks and Rec. Um, you've got your salaries listed there. There's a slight increase associated with, again, Derek taking on additional tasks with Village Hall. And then we actually have some increase <coughs> in lawn hours or lawn care. We did have 10,000 <coughs> budgeted in general Worship. government for lawn care up at Village Hall. Uh, however, the park staff is going to be taking that task over. So we kind of bumped some of their numbers up to absorb what increase that's going to be for them. And they're going to start as soon as we get the CO. Mm -hmm. Because it looks terrible right now. Basically, everything's the same for the longevity, health, short-term disability, um, mm -hmm. workers' comp, mm -hmm. retirement. Any questions on any, anything in salaries? Mm -hmm. Okay. Community outreach, this is where all of your events are. We've estimated 27000 in total event cost. Um, that's for National Night Out, Tree Lighting, Spring, Marvin Day. Uh, going forward, I'd just like to see if, you know, if we're successful with this Marvin Day, then why couldn't these events be sponsored by individual companies? That they can, and that's what, that's what Park Truck and Green was actually talking about doing for National Night Out. Instead of getting hamburgers and hot dogs, we're talking about getting a food truck and having a company <clears throat> sponsor it. Right. We're, we're just to, yeah. you know, I mean, now how much would that, what is the total amount there, 30 year? I mean, it's, you know, because right? no, there's companies about, out there who want to do it. No, no, we're, we're it's, it's a great idea. We're, we're talking about it. I'm an idea guy. Yeah, yeah. Poor John Barris doesn't have to sweat in front of a grill all night. No. We don't have spring movie night, but we are going to do a Halloween event. It's going to be a fall. Spooky movie night. This year? Yeah. It's going to be barn or treat, baby. I will not be here. Why? It's a moose hunt. You're not going to be here for Halloween? I know. <gasps> it's almost this cardinal sin. Oh my gosh. You can bring a moose back? I don't know bring a moose and a real deer. Both. Oh, just the title. Yeah. yeah. So just there are technically, I'll just put movie night. Yeah. Um, any <clears throat> questions on any of those? Okay, membership due is pretty standard. If I need money for something else, what do I do? What do you mean? Because we're talking about doing another, like a, like a beer and bourbon event. Get, a, get sponsors. I know, but I'm just asking if I need money. Because I'm hoping that like she's people buy tickets for it. Just, just <laughs> have all that's right, she's got free money. I Technically, <laughs> all the money is under events. It's just line item there for you. Like those are all subcategories of four, so zero, zero, one. Just move it around. Got it, pretty much. So where would you have that, like a fire thorn or something? Oh, the park. I didn't think we were allowed to. You can get a one day alcohol permit. Come on, Joey. Or Village Hall. I mean, we allow it. We allow it by our ordinance. Yeah. It's just a special. Are we going to allow that for Marvin Day? No. That might be a little <laughs> much for Marvin Day, but we, we, do we, we have not talked about alcohol. That's not broaching that subject. <laughs> 
So let's see. We need Jamie to be able to speak clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk to the walkie talkie. Fluently or clearly? <laughs> All right. Sorry. Sorry. Part of operations. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go over the total. You'll see the total in this year's budget is twenty two thousand, roughly twenty one one six one. You'll see an increase up to basically thirty thousand dollars. So it's roughly a ten thousand dollar increase in park operations. Um, this is just standard <laughs> cost of living increases, and things have gone up. And then the additional that we have tried to put in there for like fertilizer, mulch, that sort of thing that Village Hall is going to take. Mm -hmm. Any questions on any of that? One. What doesn't cost more? Uh, no, keep going. We're okay, ahead. moving on to vehicle. Me, Wait a minute. Us, we don't cost any more, Joe. Our our stipends didn't. Yes, sure everything else went up, but our stipends. <laughs> we don't cost any more than we did last. Am I going to call out a mayor increase? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh, they're going to use that sound bite. It's fine. It's all fun games now. So, in vehicle and equipment and equipment rentals, is, is is that does that include the the payments for the truck? No, we pay we'll cash we pay for cash the truck. For Trucks paid off. Why you need it? I, no, I just. Rental. You want to? I couldn't remember. No, I, I couldn't remember. I, I thought I thought we did, but I was like, hey. what is what is loans charge? Pick, picking trucks are expensive right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean they, they put that in. They may not use it, but if they need a piece of equipment, they have it in their budget to be able to rent something. Well, he wants a new mower. Yeah, but I'm saying that the rental it says hey, equipment dirt, rental. There's dirt. money line line item okay. for for if they need it. So. Um, okay. Yeah, okay. Park operations, vehicle, yeah. Operating expenses. It's standard across the board. Training, travel, books, gas, all that good stuff. It's pretty pretty standard. It's gone up two thousand dollars more, primarily associated with gas. Any questions on that part? And then Greenway Loop and Park Projects. This is the area where we take what's in his requested CIP. And we try to put it in here for um, whatever we can. This actually includes 100% of his CIP requests for general government. It does not include CIP requests for greenways and trails. And y'all have gone over that CIP a couple of times. I can't remember exactly what's on there for next year. Um, but it's in your consent agenda that's yeah. coming up at the next meeting. Any questions on any of that? Nope. Um, at one of the last budget meetings, I think Councilmember Wortman had requested to do a capital reserve fund for planning on um, vehicle, not vehicle, but uh, lawnmower costs over the next couple of years. So I replacement. Did, so if we save to replace it as it wears out during the you know time it's in service, we just put a little bit of money back. So when, the, when it wears out and it needs to be replaced, we have money. So I have not sat down and figured out exactly what's going to cost <laughs> in terms of how long we're going to have them, how much they cost. I have not had time to do that. But so what I'm doing in this budget is I've already done the ordinance for the capital reserve account, and I've earmarked five thousand dollars in there. During the fall, when we've, we've settled down a little bit, what we'll do is go back and figure out how much money we need every year. Yeah, this, this starts the process. That process. There's a lot of stuff. I will say when we when we enact this ordinance, just so you're aware, um, when you enact a capital reserve fund, you have to spend whatever dollar is in there on a capital reserve project. So it we'll, we'll start it with, I think the way I writ, wrote the ordinance was for vehicle and equipment maintenance and repair or something like that. But if for some reason we decide that we want to um, purchase another vehicle or or something, then we can. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> then we can we can use that money for um, that purpose. But we can't take that money out and put it back in the <coughs> salaries or anything like that. It has to go for a capital project. Can we just not do a little pot then, like a little honey pot? Like Pooh Bear? <laughs> <laughs> we, can, 
talking about doing, just putting it in a pot. I know, but if it's a capital it. thing, then it has to be used for that. So can't we just put it in a little... Well, it will just the whole point, so it has to be used for that so that when when it comes time to replace a $5,000 mower, there's... I mean, I guess we're always going to have to replace there. that, so... so always but you'll, you could use it, I mean, you could use it at the park, you could use it on anything that's got a capital purpose. Like, okay. it doesn't have to be for that one. Okay. Yeah, you this could stuff wears out, the truck is eventually going to wear out. It's going to have to be replaced somewhere down the road, and it's going to cost twice as much then as it does now. Probably. You basically can't, you just can't take that money out and put it in the operating expense okay. payment. Right. Any questions on any of his particular rules? Nope. Okay. Moving on to solid waste. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. You are, I already gave you your free one time today. You can, you can do it again tomorrow. Again, y'all heard this bill <laughs> a ton of times with solid waste and how we've done this. Um, the $27,000 there that's earmarked for the governmental share of, of salaries, if you remember God, probably six months ago, we had a discussion about using part-time staff, like hiring a new mm -hmm. part-time staff, or using existing staff and just reallocating some of their um, their salary costs. And that's what we chose to do because it was cheaper. Uh, we will reassess that as things go on, but as we've started now, we're, we're doing pretty good, so we feel like we've we've got some work. That's we feel way. like we can. That's the <laughs> we feel like we'll be okay. Um, but I do have this money earmarked here. It Just is double. It is double budgeted. So take um, our general government salaries, for instance. So we had myself, Jamie, <coughs> Jill, and Austin mm -hmm. absorbing most of those solid waste duties, which was at a tune of thirty thousand dollars in prorated share of salaries. So that money's already budgeted in those those people's original salaries. Go. I've got it double budgeted here just in case something happens. We need to hire someone. We've got some fluff to play with here. So if we don't need it, then this will be a surplus where Kim can pull some money for events. Yes. <laughs> um, well, any questions on that part? Nope. So I did budget um, four hundred and seven thousand for the services. <laughs> And it looks like I budgeted twenty thousand for a surcharge. The last bill that we got, I think it was three thousand dollars in fuel surcharge. So that um, that should be okay. We need to crunch those numbers out. They will be able to have a CPI increase. I think it's not. Um, I can't remember the exact date, but um, I've got that listed April first of twenty three. So that's listed in here for three months of CPI. Any questions on that? That is it. Five minutes, five minutes. Good job. Got done early. Seven minutes to spare. Yeah. You know what that means. No. I'd like to make a motion I'm to adjourn the. <laughs> 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 Can I? Yeah. Do, does anybody have any questions for Christina before I do it? Nope. <laughs> okay. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn the budget work session at 5:54 p.m. on Tuesday, April 12th. So, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Aye. You know what this means is what I was pointing out.